Hello, everyone. My name is Brett Denman, and welcome to another episode of Our High Calling. I pray this last week has been a blessed one for you. Um, I know it has for me, and I, I say this every week that, you know, we're going to have ups and downs in our spiritual life. And we, our job as Christians is not let the highs get too high or the lows get too low. We need to stay uh, pretty level, pretty even, have, a, have um, a good attitude about whatever comes our way. You know, and a lot of times that we can overcome the lows because we have this good attitude, optimistic. And remember that whenever something bad is happening in your life, maybe it's a way for God to teach us something about ourselves. So let's not always look at it as it's a bad thing, because if your character can improve or something about your character can be changed for the better because you went through something difficult, then praise God. For that, you know, what I'd like to talk about uh, today is about overcoming bad habits. And, you know, I, if you know my testimony, I, I my testimony is in a book I wrote called Soul About Noon, available on Amazon. And in it, I talk about that I did not have any serious uh, religious background uh, growing up. You know, nobody... In my immediate family, um, goes to church uh, then or now, uh, or has a relationship with Christ. And you know, I did learn, um, you know, in my early twenties a little bit about Christ. Uh, I went to uh, Concordia University in Portland, which is a Lutheran school. Um, so I learned a few things, but I. You, I would definitely say that I did not have a relationship with Christ. You know, I, I was not, uh, you know, against anything that he taught, you know. But then again, you know, what I learned was not anything that pierced my soul. It was not anything that got me thinking about eternal life, salvation, or anything like that. You know, I, I was then a very secular person. And even hearing spiritual things, it didn't, it didn't want me to stop. It didn't want me to change. That didn't happen until later. You know, um, when, I, when I met missionaries, when I was overseas teaching English in South Korea. And, you know, I was given a bit of advice that I wasn't given in college. I was told that I need to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to help me to understand as I was at that time going to do some Bible studies, I was going to read the Bible. And I didn't know that before. I didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit or what the Holy Spirit did, how it's, uh, what its purpose was in, in my conversion. But I was told that, and that helped me a lot because when I began that uh, journey, when I started that Bible study, you know, I prayed and I asked God that, you know, if he's real, to reveal himself to me. And the difference this time was that I decided I was going to put maximum effort into it. And one of the first verses that I read was Jeremiah 29, 13. And Jeremiah 29, 13 says, And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. So obviously, when I was in college, I wasn't searching for God to begin with. And I, and I definitely wasn't searching for him with all my heart. And a lot of times when I attended spiritual meetings, uh, chapel, things like that. I listened, but I listened half-heartedly. And how can God touch touch a man's heart if, you know, you're straddling the fence? So that's what happened to me. So as I prayed, you know, that God would lead lead me to truth and reveal himself, he did. With the, with the help of the Holy Spirit, it helped me to understand. And I share this, this is the key verse in my personal testimony, because, you know, at the time, 
I was living very secular life. I was still living, even though I was 30 years old, I was living like I was when I was in college. You know, I was still doing uh, many of the same bad habits that I had then. I was partaking in the same adult things, adult drinks and adult other things that I did, you know, 10 years before. But this verse in 1 Corinthians really, really kind of punched me in the gut. And it's 1 Corinthians 13, 11. And it says, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. And my interpretation of that verse at the time, and this is way back in 2003, that the life I was living was childish. You know, living living like a frat boy was childish. And what Jesus was convincing me was that he he doesn't want that for me. He wants me to grow up and put put that kind of stuff aside. You know, just chasing the next good time, only there to please myself. I I accepted the challenge. And you know, the Bible uh, it meant nothing before uh, to me. But now it, it, it held wonderful truth. And the more I read it, the more truth, through the help of the Holy Spirit, will reveal to me. And the more I wanted uh, to, to put aside the life that I was living and, and, and move to a next, another chapter in my life, to, to be different. Because, you know, to be honest, I was... I was worn out from from that lifestyle it, it was no longer pleasurable even though i was good at it you know at the end of the day it's it's not what i wanted and i didn't know it i didn't know how to verbalize it or to you know organize my thoughts but that's not what i wanted you know i wanted something deeper that you know to go out and and to do these sort of silly party things it's it's very shallow it's a shallow life and, and I wanted something deeper. And it's it, ha, it probably has to do with mature level. You know, obviously, uh, if I'm still acting like a 20-year-old at 30, then I was pretty immature. So as, as, as you mature and grow, you start to look at the world differently. And I, and I started to look at the world differently, you know, through, uh, through the Word of God. And, you know, as the conversion started to happen, I realized that a lot of the things that I'm doing are not good. And if I wanted to be a Christian, then I had to give up on some of these bad habits that I had developed over the course of my uh, life. And I'm not just saying, you know, over the course of my adult life. I'm talking about the entire, my entire life because, you know, I started to develop these bad habits when I was, you know, a teenager. And a lot of kids in America develop bad habits um, when it comes to, you know, partying and things like that. When they're very young, elementary school, middle school, things like that. And, you know, praise God that it didn't derail my life completely. You know, there was some bumpy parts in there. And, but a lot of, a lot of, kids in America and, and other places in the world, those things um, they don't recover from. Whether it's because they're in jail or because they're dead or just because it has debilitated them uh, maybe mentally or physically. But God was giving me a chance. He, he had uh, shown himself to me um, when I went to South Korea. And I, was, and I was ready to accept the call. And as I studied the life of Jesus, I basically realized that, you know, I, I, I'm a flawed individual. Because you can't help it. The more you study the spotless perfection of, of Christ's character, the more deeply you feel your own defects. Right? And, you know... I, I was, like the Bible says, I was a filthy rag. And, you know, it's, it's God 
who can transform us. You know, we, we can, through willpower and things like that, we can transform ourselves a little bit, but where's the staying power? Where, where, where's the, you know, the hope uh, for a better life? Because, you know, the temptation's always going to be there. That's how Satan works. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you a story that happened to me. So, you know, as I, as I was reading the Bible, and as I was studying the Word of God and, and about His character and things like that, I, I, and, and I, as I was drinking the adult drinks, I, I remember I used to go, I'd leave the missionary's house and I'd walk to, to my house, which was probably about a half mile away. I had to walk down a long road and then cross kind of a main road and then get into the neighborhood. And then my apartment was like in, in this neighborhood. It was, it was probably about six blocks the whole stretch but as i walked back i uh, i passed a store that was like the equivalent of a 7-eleven here in america and this is in seoul and i used to stop there because that was my habit to stop there and i'd get an adult beverage and then i'd keep on going and this is after a bible study and things like that right so after a few weeks of studying i got a weird feeling as I, as I walked and I looked at the store and I thought to myself, I can't, I can't do that. You know, how, how am I going to um, reflect the spotless character of Christ, ask him to live in my heart and in my body and then and put that poison in my body? So right then and there, I stopped. I, I, and, I, and this was like in September of 2003. And I've never looked back. I've been clean and sober, you know, for going on 18 years. And, but that doesn't stop Satan. Because as I would, would go out after that day, it just seems like everybody was against me. I'd be walking through the park and I'd see some old men playing some sort of little game, uh, with beans or something and I'd, I'd watch them for you know they seem to be joking and having a good time but inevitably they'd offer me alcohol and I'd say no thank you and then at my school they'd go out to dinner and inevitably the alcohol would show up and they'd be offering me that and and it was like I feel like I'm under attack and I would say no thank you but you know what if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit helping me, giving me that power and that strength, I would have probably, you know, backslidden. Because in my own strength, there's no way I could have done it. But that's, that's not, you know, the only bad habit that I had to overcome. There's many bad habits that I had to overcome. And sometimes I overcame them uh, easily, and other times it was very difficult. Very painful, very painful experience to overcome some of my character defects. And I'm still working on it. And I just pray every day that I can get closer and closer because I know that's what God wants. God needs me to, to be better. And, you know, I've, I've read, you know, this verse before. It's found in Revelation chapter 22. And it's talking about the condition of man at the the second coming of jesus and this is where we need to get to this is where we need to be and nothing stopping us from doing it but ourselves but revelation 22 11 says that he that is unjust let him be unjust still and he which is filthy let him be filthy still and he that is righteous let him be righteous still and he that is holy let him be holy still so here is the standard that god has set for heaven Right? If you're filthy, if you're unrighteous, then heaven isn't for you. But if you are righteous and holy, then, then, then that's, that's the way. And that's how we need to be. And it's only the righteousness of Christ that we put on. That nothing about us is good. So, so here we have this conversion. And, and as you converting you got to overcome these bad habits and 
you know, the Bible tells us there's a key to overcoming bad habits, to, to getting past them. And let's read a Bible verse. Let's go to 1 Timothy, and we're going to read 5.22. And really, it's it's the last part of, of verse 22 that we're going to focus on. It says, Lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partaker of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure. So, part of our education as Christians is to understand what constitu- uh, constitutes purity of mind, soul, and body. And that's what we're trying to get at. We're trying to understand not what the world teaches, but what the Bible teaches, what Jesus teaches us about purity. Because it's only through us uh, purifying ourselves of our of ourself, of the world, you know, of our bad habits, that we can really start um, to 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 start to look like Christ, to 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 be fit for heaven. Because heaven will be full of Christ-like people. So, when the character is lacking in purity, and, and when sin has become a part of that character. It, it it is it is a power that we have to overcome. And remember, we are we are dealing with an enemy who who is rooting for our destruction. That's why Satan and and, and his evil host will not rest until he has destroyed every one of Christ's believers. So just because we have Christ on our side it doesn't mean we're out of the woods. It, it's, it, it just means that now we have help. We have help in this battle. And, you know, for us to overcome, you know, and, and what is it that we, we need to have to overcome? It's, it's self-control, right? We, we need self-control. And it's, if we don't have it, and if we don't ask God to give it to us, and if we don't ask the Holy Spirit to be with us and help us to have self-control, then, you know, these, these sinful practices will continue. And if you truly want to overcome them, which I know you do, because you, you want to, to walk in glory one day, you want to be with Jesus for eternity. You know, Jesus, you know, is that treasure in heaven. And that's what we want. And there can't, there can't be, there can't be anything here on earth that is worth giving up heaven for. There's no way. You can't tell me that there's, there's any food or drink or entertainment or any activity here on earth that, that is, that is considered sinful, that is going to be better than what God has prepared for us. There's no way. You, you may, you may be deceived into thinking there is, and I've I've met those kind of people. Oh, I don't want to go to heaven if I can't do this, or I don't want to go to heaven if that's... No, man. You do want to go to heaven, because what God has prepared for us is beyond our imagination. And, you know, the problem with us humans is that bad habits are are more easily formed than good habits. And, and bad habits are given up, uh, are, are more difficult to give up because ultimately it's, it's the natural depravity of the heart that it, it takes, it takes less work to, to go down, you know, into the pit, you know, it takes less effort to be debased. And if you want a purified life if you want to be pure like Jesus it takes effort and it takes work and you have to be willing to put in that work you know and is Jesus worth it i hope he's worth it he's worth it to me and i hope he's worth it to you and you know we we have so we're building a character right we're working on a character we're changing like the old bread Remember, it's not a new and improved bread. It's a brand new bread. That's what happens when I went under the waters of baptism. I came up a new creature. But I'm a new creature with some bad habits. And I'm trying to shake those bad habits off me. And, 
you know, so it's, it's my mind that I need to work on, right? It's, it's, it's my mind and, and the natural tendencies that my mind lead me to that I need to overcome. And, you know, in, in a natural world, you know, it, it's always going to lead you to filth. And, and, and destruction and disaster. It's not going to lead to pure purity and beauty. You know, if you just if let's let's say for example you have a house, and it it's going to take effort and work to keep your house looking nice. What if you have a yard? It, it's going to take effort to keep your the yard in your home looking nice. Because if you just leave it to the natural state, what's going to happen? It's going to deteriorate. Right, your yard is going to be overrun by weeds and thorns and briars, and it's it's not going to look nice. Trust me, I I've seen houses that have nice manicured yards, and I could tell somebody put time and effort into it, and it looks nice, it looks wonderful. And then I've seen people that haven't cut their lawn all summer, and it doesn't look nice. And that has to be our attitude with our Christian walk. We got to put in the effort. If we want our character to be pure, to, to, to be nice, then we got to work on it. And that, that's only through the power of, the, of prayer and the Holy Spirit and reading your Bible and reading about the life of Christ and, and praying and asking God to help you be an overcomer, to help you change. And... Because ultimately, all of heaven is interested in you. All of heaven is interested in me. They, they, they're interested because God values each and every person. You know, he values us so much that he sent his only begotten son, right? Who died to redeem us. And, you know, and it's, it, and it's funny, God hasn't created any other being that's capable of, of of improvement and and refinement and nobility it's only us the animals of the world they only do what their instincts tell them to do how god created them we're the ones that pervert that creation we perverted god's creation god had a noble plan for us if you read the book of genesis and we've perverted it right we we take things that are lovely and we turn them into disgusting things like like marriage marriage is beautiful and it's a noble thing. And and we perverted it. You know, people now want to marry goats. It's disgusting. But we can change. People can and, and can do better, but they need help. They need and that's that's the, the plan and the purpose uh of of the father is he sent his son here to be our example, to look at his life, his spotless life, that we can change, that we can we can be refined. And, and we can one day walk with angels if we just allow God to transform us into the, the men and women that he wants us to be. Not how we think we should be, but how he wants us to be. But, you know, we have to get past these bad habits. You know, these bad habits, what do they do? They, it's basically you know these these debasing passions that we have that we feed that we continue to go back to and we need to starve them out we got to stop feeding these bad habits because i know that when people are addicted to something that they have either a physical or a mental addiction to and it and it's hard to overcome that especially a physical addiction because your body's craving it right but you know what Whatever power is in this world to get you to sin, the power that God has to keep you from sinning is greater. But we have to call on it. And it's, it's the grace of Christ that makes us uh, capable of, of progressing to getting past these bad habits. And, you know, we have to take the truth that we find in the Bible and we have to uh, let it illuminate our mind. And we have to think on these things and we have to allow our minds to think on good things. Not be 
drawn back down into the gutter. God wants to elevate us. And I'm talking not just here on earth, but one day he wants to elevate us all the way to heaven. And for you to do that here on earth is the challenge to overcome these bad habits. This is what we have to do. We have to pray. We got to wake up in the morning and we got to pray and we got to ask God uh, to help us, to be with us this day, to be with us, whatever darts Satan throws at us, help us to block them. Help us to take the shield of truth and to block these darts and to keep moving forward in our walk. Remember, we have to die to self daily. You know, whatever these bad habits that have uh, kept us in chains, we have to allow Christ to unlock those chains. And we have to love what God loves and hate what he hates. And God hates sin. So if you find yourself, you know, uh, you know, trapped in sin, you got to get on your knees. You got to pray and ask God. You got to have an earnest discussion with God to say, God, I, I, I want to stop doing this and I cannot do it on my own. And then you have to make steps afterward um, to try to avoid it. Listen, if you have a gambling problem, you got to avoid gambling halls. I mean, you, you got to do this at the beginning because, you know, ultimately you'll get to a point where even if people are coming uh, to your door and knocking and giving away free lottery tickets, you're not interested. But in the beginning, you're not going to be that way. In the beginning, you don't have that strength to overcome. And Satan knows it. And remember, it's Satan only needs you to have one pet sin. That's it. He only needs you to have one little bad habit that you hold on to. And you're lost. So you got to give it all to God. You got to give it all to him. You have to, you know, look at your life. Look at the life of Christ. Compare the two. You know, what is it that, that do, do I have a, sh a temper? Do I have a short fuse? Do I have no patience? Do I have no love for my neighbor? You know, do, do I, I like, you know, uh, certain things that I shouldn't like? You know, am I, am I, you know, taking part in other people's sins by watching things on television. You know, all these things are contributing uh, to your downfall that Satan is putting before you. So we have to pray. We have to ask God to help, you know, to free us. You know, we don't want to be slaves to sin. We don't want to be prisoners of sin. We want to be free. Jesus died to set us free. So we need to pray and ask. And we need to work on it day by day. We have to understand that every morning is, is a new battle begins. And we, so every day you have to pray and ask God to give you strength to overcome. Because you don't know what shape or form that temptation is going to come in. It's, it could come in a very friendly looking package. It could be a co-worker that you like a lot. Or it could be a family member. You don't know. But whatever package sin is, is gifted to you in, you have to reject it. I'm not saying you reject the person giving it to you. Look, nobody at my work knows that I've been sober for 18 years. And when they offer me alcohol, I just politely decline. And most of them are, are content with, okay, he doesn't want it. And those that try to push a little more, you know, maybe I'll tell them, no. I, I gave that up when I when I became a Christian, and I, I do not drink. Okay, boom, there it is. That's the truth. Glory be to God for me overcoming, you know, alcoholism. And, you know, that's not who I am anymore. And they understand that now. You know, so just pray, ask God to help you, strengthen you, and those, those, uh, bad habits, they won't, you know, some people can quit cold turkey, but for most of us, it, it'll take time. But God, God will be with us every step of the way. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and mercy and the grace that you give us. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit that comes into our life that helps us to make right choices. And we thank you for the life of Christ, the spotless, sinless life of Jesus, who we now can look to and to see what he did to be successful and that we can try to 
uh, imitate his character, right? By beholding, we become changed into the likeness, and we want that, to be like Christ. Bless each and every one of us as we begin a new week. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I thank you, everyone. I pray that you all have a wonderful week. We'll see you right back here next time. God bless. Thank you.